Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we are back in front of the rabbit ranch that we built in yesterday's episode. I'm quite happy with this, and I'm now a little bit happier with the rabbit farm itself, because all I did to fix this was separate out the two mechanisms we had here. We had one that was providing water to this area, making sure the rabbits could jump up and down and we could feed them carrots, and the other we have separated out here, attached to this note block. So if I punch that note block, then the water stream turns on, the planks get retracted. That basically means that all of the rabbits in here get to stay in here until they can grow up and then we can release them into the cell with the vindicator but yeah i thought it was just happening a little bit too fast and the baby rabbits were falling down through the fence post before they really had a chance to grow up inside of there so yeah i, I decided to separate those two out it's a two-step process now instead of a one-step process but i'm still pretty happy with it and once again <laughs> you really don't need the vindicator to kill them but it is kind of fun to have it all linked up to this farming setup now i'm gonna do the opposite of what i did yesterday yesterday Today we started in the nether and then came back to the overworld to do all this fun stuff with rabbits. Today we are going to return to the nether because I want to get some serious progress made in taking down the nether fortress around the wither skeleton farm that I started just a few episodes ago because it has the potential to become a pretty fantastic wither skeleton farm. For that we need to come all the way back out here and yeah take a look at this. So anywhere that you see some weird spots in the lava, I don't know quite how easy it's going to be to see this with v YouTube video compression and stuff but you can kind of see there where there's a divot in the lava over there and there are these patches around the outside where the lava texture is flowing instead of static that is where we have removed pillars of the nether fortress so far so as you can see we've actually done quite a decent amount of work and i don't know if there are going to be any mobs in the farm right here oh there are there are a couple of wither skeletons in there so basically every time i've taken down a section of this and i come back over here there are more and more mobs appearing in this farm and while the farm isn't actually collecting drops from any of them yet and the wither skeletons still have yet to have any kind of lure mechanism to get them into a killing area it's doing pretty well and if you look closely you can actually see there are gold nuggets and magma cream in there so this will actually passively farm drops from magma cubes and zombie pigmen although they're not player kill drops so unfortunately you won't get absolutely everything you won't get like a looting amount that you might get from a magma cube the zombie pigmen won't drop gold ingots or gold swords and blazes will not drop blaze rods if they spawn in there but that's not really the point of this farm the point of this farm is just to separate out the wither skeletons and any other drops we get from it are a happy accident so i'm really happy with how this is going so far and today we're going to be taking down a large portion of the rest of the nether fortress and we are going to be doing some sections of it manually people have been asking me why i haven't been using tnt duplicators for the entire thing it's because i'm afraid of destroying this section of the farm even with the obsidian around the outside i kind of ran out of obsidian which is why you don't see more of it covering the top of the farm and the sides even with the obsidian around it though we would potentially get some explosion damage going through those blocks and damaging some stuff on the other side the explosion might you know remove some of the wither roses from the blocks and wither roses despite the fact that we are farming them right now are still something kind of precious <laughs> at this point so i'm not quite comfortable with those just like dropping and being destroyed it seems like a bit of a waste of resources people have also been asking me why i haven't been just using buttons or slabs to remove all of the spawnable area from the surrounding terrain and why I've decided to take down the entire nether fortress instead and the honest reason for that is because I feel like it's going to look kind of impressive and sometimes the way you want to do stuff in Minecraft is not always going to be the most efficient way it's going to be the way that looks the coolest and I think we could do some really interesting decorations in here like by holding the farm up with some kind of infernal pedestal rising out of the lava or somebody even suggested in the comments having chains coming down from the ceiling and connecting to the sides of the farm which as long as we can make sure they are spawn proof maybe by using like uh, polished andesite slabs or something like that could look pretty spectacular as though this entire thing is just being shackled here or is just being held up like it's some sort of prison for the wither skeletons you've really got to think of the aesthetics of the nether as well and quite how crazy this place looks really and i think we could do some really 
honestly very cool stuff with it. So that's why I've decided I want this whole thing to be kind of for effect instead of for efficiency or because like, you know, the, the efficiency of the farm is not really going to be called into question. It's the time efficiency, the product that you're going to get out of this compared to how much time you put into it. But then again, Minecraft is all about putting the time in. Minecraft is all about the grind and so forth. And if you can make the grind a little bit easier on yourself, fair enough. But if you come out with something that looks really, really cool afterwards, I honestly think that's more of a win. <laughs> so I'm going to be spending a lot of time today taking down some more sections of this nether fortress. I will probably get the rest of the manual stuff done from around here and then take out the TNT duplicators and finish the rest off. So what better way to do that than in the form of a time lapse?
Hey folks, welcome back, I hope you enjoyed the time lapse, and I am still taking down some terrain around here, but I figured I would pause for a second just to start a hopper minecart running, because now we've taken down a substantial amount of the nether fortress, still doing a little bit of it this section here manually, and then I'm probably going to run some flying machines over the rest of these sections, but we are getting some stuff spawning in the farm, and I am missing out on a bunch of gold nuggets and probably some magma cream that I could just collect, so I might as well get that uh, that hole there patched up, probably patch up the other holes I'm seeing around here as well, from ghast fireballs and stuff, and we'll set a hopper minecart going, and while I take down the rest of this section of the fortress, I will see how much stuff we can collect in the meantime. And obviously, we will need to clear out a large area around here if we really want this to be entirely the only place that stuff can spawn. But still, we are getting spawns in there much more frequently now we have a little bit less terrain in the surrounding area. In fact, these pigmen here are kind of the only mobs that I can see for a significant distance around me, which is very, very good news. The bad news, unfortunately, is that there are occasionally caves that generate in the nether ceiling, and I've stumbled across one or two of them as I've been creating these flying machines here and there. There's a couple of spots where it does kind of end up in an area like this, and then I end up falling in lava, but yeah, no, we have, we have sections of the nether ceiling that look like this, and then they start to open out a little bit more as we head back down here, and this is potentially some more terrain that we could remove with flying machines, but you need enough headroom for the flying machine in the first place, so a lot of work has to go into this stuff. But I have to say, it's gone a little bit faster than I was expecting, especially considering that nether brick cannot be removed using haste and an efficiency 5 pickaxe, because unfortunately, according to the Minecraft wiki, you would need haste 4 to be able to instamine nether brick. The time to break is just a little bit longer than stone, and that makes all the difference when it comes to instamining. It's like trying to instamine a patch of cobblestone with a haste beacon. It doesn't quite work that way. So taking this down manually has been a little bit slow going, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, it's necessary for these bits which the TNT duplicators missed, these occasional blocks that it will leave of the walls here and there, that it just isn't worth setting up another TNT dupa to remove. And also, the worn down stubs of the Nether Fortress pillars, where I decided to just cancel the flying machine and uh, continue to take the rest of that stuff down manually, because it was just going back and forth and back and forth, and not really using the time efficiently. I know it seems silly to be concerned with using the time efficiently when I've already said that, like, efficiency isn't necessarily what I'm going for here, but you know what, yeah, it's, it's, it's a concern. It's something that I feel like I could be doing more effectively for the same end goal. And the fact that this is taking me quite a while to do is the reason that this episode, if you're watching live, is coming out a day later than it normally would. I skipped an episode the other day because, yeah, this is just taking a decent amount of time, but I'm really happy with the progress we've made so far. It also means that I don't have to record as much while there is construction noise happening in my neighbor's house, so that's just a, uh, a thing that I have to deal with right now. But anyway, I'm going to drop down an ender chest here, I'm going to dig out a hopper from my redstone box here, and I guess I'll drop the quartz and the trapdoor in there for a minute so I can free up some space in my inventory. Then this one should have all the minecarts in, great, there we go, I will make a hopper minecart out of those, and we can start that going around the circuit that we have built here, and hopefully that should collect up any drops that the zombie pigman and magma cubes and stuff are leaving behind in what is eventually going to be the Wither Skeleton Farm. Let's see if I can drop myself down here. I can. Perfect. Do I need a block on the opposite side of there, or is that... I think that is all glass. It's difficult to tell, but I think it is all glass. So if I place that there now and set a nether brick there to start it going, hopefully that should not just be spat out the other side. Let me quickly go around and check. I think all of the rest of this is all glass, so there's no reason why that bit around the other side shouldn't be. Yep, looks like that section there is glass, and it even has a nether brick on the end, so that's fantastic. We should be able to get all of the drops that we need from that, and they should be deposited in the chest here. Now, we won't, we're not going to get a huge amount right now, but it will hopefully clean up some of the stuff as pigmen have been spawning in there when I've been a reasonable distance away from the farm. So, fingers crossed, we should get a little bit of stuff out of that. Aside from that, it is just going to be the rinse and repeat process of continuing to take these down, taking down the TNT flying machines and dropping them off in a different place, which is taking a while, but it's definitely going to be worth it. And it's been a long road to get to this point, and there's still a lot more work to be done, especially with the terrain around here, but I have 
basically gotten tired of taking down this much of the nether fortress. I think we are probably ready to give this farm a go. It's not going to be as efficient as it could be, but with an AFK spot up here at the top, I think we could potentially get some decent drops out of this farm. Once we modify it to accommodate with the skeletons being lured out of one side, we could do this a couple of ways. We could do this with iron golems around the perimeter. We could do this with dogs scaring the wither skeletons towards a specific location. I think we're going to go with a combination of the two. So we'll have dogs on three sides and an iron golem on the fourth side, and that's where all of the wither skeletons will hopefully end up running to into a pit that's going to drop them down to probably around lava level where the player will be able to take them out with a couple of swipes. But I am here with my camera account in spectator mode, flying around as though I was a ghast here in the nether, just to show you what the fortress used to look like. Because I'm logged in right now with Bounding Box Outline Reloaded, the mod that shows you all of the bounding boxes of the individual segments of a nether fortress and when I turn this thing on you will see precisely what we have removed here and there are some sections of the nether fortress which you will see will still interact with the terrain so right here in this space it is possible for fortress mobs to spawn because there is netherrack inside one of these corridor spaces so that's something we're going to have to deal with we're going to have to remove that if we want fortress mobs to only spawn in there and of course the pigmen spawning everywhere else are going to be a problem to take up the hostile mob cap as well but just look at the sheer amount of work we have now done to remove fortress buildings from this area. There are still a few out here on the periphery, but to be honest, we could leave the ones which are over 128 blocks away from the farm because that's going to be at the distance where mobs just won't spawn out there anyway. And this whole section over here is gone, left only <laughs> some netherrack and some lava streams here and there. And all the way out to this point over here, it's gone, at which point I don't really think we need to remove it because I don't think the uh, fortress there is going to be within range of our wither skeleton farm. But this is a massive undertaking. It's taken a bunch of work a lot of time and i've been at it for most of today and yesterday so i think we are probably going to call it there for this video and in future we'll be spending some live streams and some more stuff just more spare time really taking down the remainder of the fortress and the terrain around here i gotta say though I'm pretty happy with what we've managed to do so far and now it's time to get back into the regular Minecraft client and do something about trapping this farm for the wither skeletons. Okay folks, I am maneuvering the dogs into their new homes here and we've got to make sure that they sit so they don't try and go after the skeletons or walk out of these little boxes. But what I've got here is a bottom half slab platform all the way around the farm. Just got to keep an eye on these ghasts in case they decide to fireball my new pooches. Anyway, the uh, the dogs here have a one block, uh, three block wide gap that they can look in through here. And I've kept that sort of half a slab wide, but I might end up uh, widening that slightly if we need to, if the skeletons need to be able to see them and they can't from here. But with the skeletons have quite a high field of view, so... It might be that we need to elevate the dogs up a little bit so they can be seen. We might need to protect them from blazes if the blazes decide to have a crack at them. But the half slab there should protect them from that while still allowing them to be detected by those mobs. I need to do a little bit more testing to make sure that that's going to be okay. But then we just need one more dog over here. I brought two at a time because I figured probably best not to attempt more than that. And they're just stationed in those boxes on this side, this side, and this side. And then over here on this extended section of the platform is where we're going to have our iron golem and that is going to be the bait for the wither skeletons to walk through this three block wide gap here and end up falling down into another section which we're probably going to have trap doors over the front of to make it feel like they can walk off towards the iron golem and instead they're going to walk down into a pit that we're going to dig underneath here in fact we're probably going to have to get into the lava and that might be a fun episode in and of itself how to make a gap into lava using uh, gravity blocks like sand and gravel and that kind of stuff and then digging it out so that we can make a safe area for the player to stand underneath this lava lake because afking up there is all very well but it's not really going to be that effective considering that the wither skeletons are just going to be making their way outwards and downwards so we're going to have to start an afk section underneath this farm and that is why 
clearing out this area rather than setting a high AFK spot is probably going to be preferable because that's going to mean that the most stuff can spawn in here at once. Remember, we need to be at least 23 blocks away from the spawning platforms to have the optimal chances to spawn stuff and not have it despawn in the meantime. And yeah, we're going to have to dig an area out down there where a player can stand and attack the Wither Skeletons as they arrive. So our last addition to the Wither Skeleton Farm is a brand new puppy that I bred from the dogs over here at the farm. And that one's going to be the last of our three Wither Skeleton Farm dogs. Hopefully that should be fine. And uh, I should probably, uh, yeah, let me tie you to a fence post real fast just so I can go and grab the bits for the Iron Golem. And of course, we've got to remember to shear the pumpkin before we go anywhere, because otherwise we're not going to be able to use that to turn it into an iron golem. Now let's throw the shears back in here. There we go. Man, my inventory is a bit of a mess right now. And yeah, let's throw those pumpkin seeds out. Got plenty of those. I'm bringing some nether brick fences with me. I have been gathering a ton of those from the fortress takedown. And some of those are going to be useful to barricade the golem off so that it can still keep eye level eyesight with the uh, the wither skeletons. But it's not going to be attacked by any blazes that spawn in the farm. Because the blazes don't die instantly on contact with the wither roses, even though it is kind of quick and the golem could potentially take some damage from them if we're not careful. And I almost went to the nether without bringing this little dog with me, <laughs> but we probably better bring him. He is kind of a key part of the whole system. And getting dogs to follow you through the nether is the tricky part, really. Uh, they should be able to follow you around on most of these player place blocks. Uh, occasionally, they get a little bit hesitant to follow you out onto the nether rack, but they should just teleport to you in most circumstances. Right now, though, the dog does not seem to be. And this is something I noticed with the other dogs as well. They don't seem to like teleporting out of the nether hub over here. It may just be because they don't have a space to step down or something. I'm not quite sure, but the teleportation thing should not really be that much of a problem. So let's see if we can get this little lad to follow us down here. Yep, there we go. Okay, and now once we step out of here and pull him onto the nether rack using this lead, we should be able to take him off the lead. And then when I fly a little bit further away using my fireworks here, he should teleport straight to me in a second or two. Yep, there he is. Okay, great. So sometimes it takes a second or two for them to show up, but all you need to do is go a little bit further away to the extent where they're going to teleport to you, like so, and there he is. Perfect. Okay, great. So we'll make our way over to the farm in stages, but being able to do that does save us a little bit of time. Of course, the next thing you've got to do is make sure they don't wander off into lava or fire or anything else that might t uh, cause them to take a bit of damage. But down here should be a safe spot for us to land. Yep, there we go. Yep, there's the dog. Fantastic. And then over here to the farm, one last little trip and we should be good to go. Once again, much like that time we moved cats back from the jungle to my base, the main thing is to make sure that the dog is still in loaded chunks when you next touch down because it's not going to be able to follow you through the air or anything. So you will definitely need to make sure the dog is able to uh, to follow you and that the chunk the dog is in is still loaded when you uh, set down once you've been flying around like that. Now this one should just go over there. We'll probably need to lead it onto the slabs as like with most mobs, the dogs are a little bit unsure about what to do on slabs and they start to move around a little bit jerkily like this like they're only taking a couple of steps at a time but that's fine that actually makes them a little bit more cautious on this thin platform I've created and we should just be able to shuffle it into this little box over here take the lead off tell it to sit fantastic okay there we go and now we can box the dog in like so it should be absolutely fine in there it should be able to grow up without any problems and then around the Inside of here, once wither skeletons start to spawn, they should end up being directed towards that side of the farm. There is a chance, though, that they might try and run towards one of these corners. So the iron golem being over here as bait is definitely going to be an integral part of this to make sure that they decide to go in this direction if they aggro on the iron golem first. The golem is just going to be standing in a box here and we're probably going to put a row of those along there so we can add fences. Nothing should be able to spawn on there once we've added the fences and then the key is to make sure that we have slabs of the bottom half of variety around the outside here. We need to make sure that whatever blocks we have around the outside here that the top half is going to be a slab because otherwise stuff is going to be able to spawn on top of it and we really want to decrease the spawnable space around here where possible. Last of all this is where we can put our little t-shirt 
shaped section of iron for the iron golem, add a pumpkin on top, and oh, oh yeah, I, oh no, there we go, I thought I thought he was attached to the fence then and he couldn't spawn, but looks like he has, fantastic. Now to make sure that he is completely sheltered from any ghasts and stuff that might be spawning around the outside here, I should really go and grab myself some more nether brick. An additional row of fences along the top there should make sure that the blazes won't be able to see him, but with a skeleton should have a decent line of sight to this guy if he is right here. So that should be an ideal environment for him. And we're about to see a perfect example of that in action. Yep, yeah, we got some blazes in there taking damage from the Wither Roses. Looks like the Wither Skeleton is hanging out over here and hopefully his AI should cause him to pathfind over here a little bit. In a second he will walk towards the Iron Golem because he should be able to see him from there. And if he can't, that's a problem we will need to rectify. But nope, it looks like he has wandered over here attempting to aggro on the Iron Golem and he's just fallen down there. At this point we should probably make sure the Golem is blocked off completely completely because otherwise they might be able to come up and get him and we don't want that at all. Yep, our friend the golem should now be safe and sound inside of here. The wither skeletons that spawn in the farm should be able to see him and hopefully the dogs are doing work there a little bit as well. We might need to reconfigure the dogs if the wither skeletons end up getting stuck in the corners but with any luck that should be fine. If anything, it might be better to get a dog on each of the corners looking in towards the center of the farm to prevent the wither skeletons from getting stuck in there, push them all more towards the middle and then maybe the uh, aggro on the iron golem will take effect more quickly. Once again, I will have to do a little bit of testing in creative to finalize the details of this farm, but I think it's coming along really well and we've done a heck of a lot of work to make sure that this is gonna be a more efficient spawning area for them. So that is where we're gonna leave it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Thank you folks so much for coming along on this journey with me as we took down the Nether Fortress. Hopefully we should be able to get this farm finished off sometime in the next week or so. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.